thank Caleb for thinking of me and y'all let me come out here. Um, it's always good to visit a good church, you know, and, and uh, do what God wants you to do. He's been speaking to me a lot here recently. And I don't know about you all, when God speaks to me, I listen. <laughs> I've got to. Uh, uh, but, you know, I'll tell you a little bit about me. I'm, my name's Matthew. I have a wife and two kids. God's blessed me with a beautiful family. I was saved when... Um, I guess I was 11 years old in, in uh, fifth grade, or however old you are in fifth grade, I don't really know, but uh, I was going through a lot as a child, and a lot that a child really shouldn't go through. Um, I was in fifth grade, I was bullied heavily by the kids in my school, and uh, I was to the point to where I just couldn't take it anymore, and the, it, just, it just so happens, and God stepped in, and he, he came down to that school, it was Bel, uh, Belmore's Elementary, and they started a, a Youth for Christ program, and uh, I started going there, my mom let me go, and she'd come pick me up, and I, I got to one of the, the services they were having, and uh, the preacher got up there and he said, you need to turn your life over to God or you're going to go to hell. And he said, God will help you through the things Amen. that you need to go through in life. And I was sitting there with them three boys. that They, they went to that program just to pester me and sit there and sat next to me. And uh, when it's time for, for altar call, I raised my hand and I gave it all to God. I said, I can't take it anymore, God. You know, when we got up, them three boys beside me had their hands raised too. And they said, I can't take it no more. And I didn't get picked on anymore. And I tell you, that's, that's a true testimony of God right there, church. He, if, if, you need, if you need Him, He will be there for you. In the flip of a switch, and it doesn't matter what situation you are in, He will come in and touch your life and touch your soul, and He will turn everything around. He will turn everything around for you. And he, he sure did that, and I've, I've not been perfect. No one is. I, I've, I fell off of Him. I've abandoned Him. He's never abandoned me. He's always been right there beside my side, and I thank God for it. I, I thank God He's never given up on me. And this old wicked world we live in, and He's always been there for me. You know, He, he was there for me before I got saved. You know, before I was 11 years old. Ain't that amazing, church? Ain't that amazing? He, he was there before you got saved, before you called upon Him to That's take right. over your Amen. take over your issues that this world has given you and living in this worldly world with this worldly possession. But He was still there. He was still there just waiting. He, uh, I heard uh, somebody speak a while back said that it, imagine your life as a party and you, you're in a, inside the house having a, a, a gracious party and God's standing outside. He'll knock on that door, but He's waiting for you to open it. And that's what happened. He was waiting for me. All them 11, 12 years, however long it was, he was sitting there waiting for me. He knew what I needed. And he knew, I, he knew he'd come in my life when I needed the most. And uh, Anyways, the Lord, Lord spoke to me many times this week. And uh, I, I didn't know until earlier this morning, Caleb messaged me on there and asked me if I was available, which I was. And I, I thank God for it. Um, but he's brought me to 1 John and chapter 3, verse 13, is where I'm, or verse 11 is where I'm going to start there. Um, I may stick to it. I don't know. I, I, I've learned in the little time that I've been preaching that he don't let me stick to things where I want, want to. He takes me different places. Um, uh, for this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain who is that wicked one and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. <laughs> y'all, y'all can sit down. I'm gonna kind of move around here. I'm, I'm gonna stay, stay there at 13. There, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. They don't, you know, don't be surprised, church. If being a Christian, this world's not gonna hate you. Yeah. I've, I've ran into it already. You know, I'm a, I'm a young man. Young people these days, my generation is, is killing Christianity. They, they just won't stick to it. I don't understand it. I can't have friends who are Christians my age for some reason. It's because they're lost, church. They're lost. Uh, it's, this world, it's, it's, allowing the, um, it's allowing all these worldly things to happen that the Bible says an abomination. They're, they're letting uh, gay marriage and homosexuality saying it's okay. And, and, they, and then we're justifying it somehow through our, our political injustice system, making everybody think it's okay. Then, then uh, they're, they're going on and talking about how it's okay for uh, women and men to tra- change over to women having bathrooms for them and transgender. And it, it, it speaks of it in the Bible, church. If, if we would read our Bibles, if this world would read their Bibles and go to Deuteronomy, then it would say that it is an abomination. It is an abomination. It doesn't say that it's not good. It doesn't say don't do it. It says that it is an abomination of God to, to have homosexuality justified and man to lay with another man and a woman lay with another woman. It also says it's an abomination to dress in women's clothes. 
and a woman to do the same. But we're justifying it in this world, church, and it's got to stop. Amen. It's got to stop because I'm telling you what, they were talking about earlier that the Lord's coming. You better, it, Whether you're ready or not, He's coming, church. He's coming. It's coming sooner than you'd ever think it would. Mm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on reading. I'm going to try to stick, stick this out. <laughs> We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Amen. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive that we, that we love God because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. Amen. Ain't that good, church? <laughs> Jesus shed his blood for us, church. Amen. He, he did it just for me and you. But whoso that hath this world's good and seeth his brother hath need and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in world, word neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. I don't know about you, God is greater than me and everything yes, that is in me. I'm no good. I'm no good. I don't deserve His love more than, more than anybody deserves anything. God has always been there. He's always there for you, church. He, he, it doesn't matter what you do to Him. You can stray away and you can backslide and you can never go to church, but He's always still going to be there for you. Amen. Mm. Amen. Ain't, that good? Ain't that good to know that you got something to rely on? And she got somebody to talk to. I love my wife dearly, but sometimes I can't go to her. I got to go into my, I call it my prayer closet. It's just our little closet. I go and I sit down and I say, God, take it from me. What can I do? And me and him have a conversation like I was, he was just sitting there right like you are. And me and him talk and he talks back to me and he touches. I feel his touch, church. You can feel his church. You feel his touch. I feel his touch. He'll come down there and he'll touch me and he'll say, it's okay. It's okay to go through these things. It's okay because I'm here with you. I'll take it from you. Right. Mm, God is good, church. I love Him so much. He, you're going through something that you don't know have an answer to. He'll give it to you. No, I'll tell you, I've, there's been times here recently too. I've been going, I don't know what to do, and He's always answered me. Mm. I, I forgot where I was. I guess I'm at 20. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is the, His commandment, that we should believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us a commandment. And He that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him, and He in Him. And hereby we know that He abideth in us by the Spirit which He has given us. God has given us a Spirit that's going to allow us to live our lives without anything to worry about. These are worldly things that's happening, whether it's bills, whether it's sickness, whether it's the worldly, the worldly things going wrong. God's going to have an answer for that one day, church. He's going to end it all. He's going to come back. And He's going to take us to our heavenly home home that, that song was singing about getting to go and see see uh, the streets of gold and i can't it makes me so happy to think that i'm if, if this world is the worst thing that i'm ever going to have to see and i have a pretty good life with god in it yeah. my life ain't so good when he ain't in it Amen. when i try to stray away from god when god's in i live a good life and that's if that's the worst that i can see i can't wait to go to heaven church i can't wait i, I can't wait to go and and talk to him and and talk to all, all the people of the Bible. You're going to get to talk to Peter and John and Matthew and Luke and get ask them what, what when this happened. You know, Peter, when you started sinking and you started out, uh, you started doubting God, and He came and He said, "Come." What did you think, Peter? Woo! <laughs> Woo! I can't wait, church. I get to see your family members that go up there, and I think it's going to be a rejoicing party. Hmm. That's all the Bible gave me, or the Lord gave me in the Bible. I just want to tell you how much I love God. Not sometimes I'm a little short-winded. Y'all have to forgive me, <laughs> but uh, but but you know, it, I, I I preach what God gives me. When He gives you a message, it it it's, doesn't matter if it's five seconds or five minutes or fifty minutes. As long as if it's strong, it's strong. And and I tell you what, I I really enjoy the, you know the the fellowship y'all have given us just just this short amount of time. You know, I, I appreciate. I, I I love you all, and I don't even know you, but I love you and. Uh, like it said right there, I read, love, one, love our brother, right? yeah. my brother. Yeah. That's all I got. I appreciate y'all letting me stay and hopefully you can come back and, and have church with y'all. But we, I love you. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Let me say this. You got your trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.